Assalamu alaikum, good afternoon, and welcome to Knowledge Talks. A weekly entertainment and knowledge sharing program aired live specifically to share with you topics that contribute knowledge to the society. Every week, Knowledge Talks hosts and invites guests that are experts, professionals, and leaders from the field that bring wealth of knowledge to you. Knowledge Talks also highlights and promotes talents in the country that contribute knowledge and success to the nation. This program, ladies and gentlemen, is a weekly session that I will have with you every Tuesday. I'm your host, Tariq Hilal Al Barwani, along with our studio engineer, DJ Ayoub, for an hour bringing you free knowledge at your doorsteps on Oman Radio FM 90.4. Okay, stay tuned after this quick music break for today's interesting knowledge topic. Welcome back to Knowledge Talks, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Tariq Hilal Al Barwani, along with our studio engineer, DJ AU, with you here live today on Oman Radio FM 90.4. Many people complain about having a passion but not being able to pursue them due to challenges in life. Well, my guest this week is an elite example of a great talent that found her passion while being physically challenged. Miss Sophia Abdullah Muhammad Al Bahlani is my guest today. Not any guest, but elite guest, ladies and gentlemen. She is a Romani artist, creative designer, and an inspirational and motivational speaker. Masha Allah. <laughs> Sophia, despite all challenges, has collaborated with local and international uh, exhibitions for her elite work and was also featured in TEDx Talks. <laughs> that, as well as Sam Global. <laughs> She today advocates people with special needs, inspires and motivates others to come uh, over their challenges in life. This, ladies and gentlemen, is an example of a great commitment to excellence, mashallah. <music> ladies and gentlemen, Sophia is a young painter artist who overcame disorder challenges to make a name and a brand that everyone in Oman is proud of, mashallah. And today, we have her as our guest as she shares her successful journey to us, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, Safiya. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah, how are you? I'm doing very, very well, Safiya. First and foremost, Safiya, let me say that you are among the people that I enjoy looking at your social media activities, the, uh, the, 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 the posts that you have. In fact, every now and then when I open my Instagram and my social media platform, I one of the people, I obviously look, re, look at the news and some of the personalities that I like to, uh, to check on. And you are one of the people that I love to see the kind of things that you're doing, mashallah, because the creativity that you're doing is magnificent, mashallah. Thank you. Thank you. Safiya, you do talk shows, you do presentation, you are an artist as well. Now, before I get into the activities that you do and uh, and the programs that you do and the work that you do, please share to us about yourself. I know you, and I know a number of people know about you. Safiya Al-Bahlan, you are a brand, but there are some few segments I'm sure that they don't know, and this few segments might be into the program. It will be nice to introduce yourself to us. Uh, so, I'm Safiya Al-Bahlani. Um... An artist. Uh, my journey in art started with myself uh, using art as a therapy. Whenever I couldn't speak, um, before learning how to read and write, it used to be scribbles uh, that turned into drawings. And when I started learning how to read and write, uh, I started making poetry. Okay. Okay, that's good. Okay. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So, and from there, I decided, you know, art is what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay, that's nice. So, so the passion was built from you when you were at a very young age, right? Yeah. Okay, and that's when you discovered your passion. You wanted to turn this from a passion to business? Yes, no? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> mashallah, mashallah, mashallah. Tell us about your schooling. Where did you, uh, you study? How did it all start? 
Wow. Um, I started in Angwin, uh, first grade, but it was very difficult because, um, you know, uh, being physically challenged, uh, Angwani schools thought that it wasn't necessary for me, you know, to be part. And it was a struggle. And I started here first grade, then I went to the States for two years. Okay. I came back and um, finding another school again. And... Um, I was in one school for seven years, moved to another school for another three years, and then I I was only considered a listener. Even though I have physical challenges, I also have learning disability where I can't memorize very much. Okay. And I'm on schooling system, everything was memorization. So I moved to TASM, the American International School. Okay, here I'm on. Yeah, and okay. that's where I graduated from. And then after that, um, I decided I wanted to do graphic design and a college, scientific college of design just opened here in Amman and I did two semesters, okay. but again, everything was, even though it was art, there was a lot of memorization and it wasn't really working out for me. I got the opportunity to go to Jordan okay. and I pursued graphic design for another semester, but again, the colleges, everything, there wasn't... Um, practical work. So I started looking for a different college and I came down to this institute, uh, Australian Institute, where they do filmmaking and animation. Mm -hmm. And I decided to leave graphic design and take something even harder, which is animation. And there it was all about your creativity and how do you produce instead of just memorizing and answering exams. And then I came back here and started looking for a job. Okay, mashallah. Now tell me, I'll go one step back in the school. What kind of challenges did you get in school here, Norman? Was it because of the memorization? It was a memorization and then the accessibility. Um, there was a lot of things I couldn't participate in, whether okay. it was due um, people are scared for me to participate or because I physically couldn't. Okay. So, yeah. Today, when we, 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 uh, we met, mashallah, and when I just uh, uh, saw you, I've noticed one thing. You are very, very confident. Yeah. Mashallah. Not only confident, I think you're confident more than myself. <laughs> and people tend to say that, of course, but I can see the confident. For instance, uh, a number of incidents that has happened within just uh, this few minutes that we've met, uh, when I wanted to, to take something or hold something, I said, you said, no, I will do it. Yeah. And, and that itself is an example of confidence that has been built. How do you build that confidence? It's actually, my mom built it in me. <laughs> mashallah, mashallah. So she never take no for an answer. And unless you, can, you, you can't really do it, you should try. Until okay. you say, until you, you know, you should try something and then you say you can't do it. Mashallah, mashallah. I like that. So you, 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 you believe or you trust anything, parents play a very important yeah. role. And anything is possible. I love that. Until you prove that it's not. Ladies and gentlemen, here an example of many people that I know who are not challenged, uh, physically challenged, but they come, they, they, they say they don't know what their passion is, number one, or they say, I can't do this. But here is Sophia, mashallah, as an example, not only has found her passion, but also says everything is possible. That's right? Yes. Mashallah, which that's, I, I really, really respect very, very high. Now, you are into graphic design. Mm-hmm. And the reason why you went to do graphic design is because you're passionate about it. Yes. And so now your career also is into graphic uh, design. Uh, more of the fine arts. I mean, I do minimum graphic design work. Yeah. Okay. Give, tell me the difference between the two. Uh, graphic design is more of logos and uh, graphic, um, uh, like designs for movies or commercials. Okay. And what I do is more of designs for like... Um, canvases and product lines so okay. yeah and mashallah 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 you have your instagram account which you could you share with us the the uh, the, the 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 one that shows your work not the <laughs> okay <laughs> uh sophia arts which is s-a-f-i-y-a underscore a-r-t-s arts yeah okay that's your 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 uh, instagram account which has all the creative side work, yeah the creative side that you do and now i also understand you do teach i do teach uh, i Mashallah. started uh, almost two years ago and it started with just um, family friends okay and then slowly it's expanded to people i didn't know <laughs> and uh, i like it because what a, it builds m more confidence in myself, and two, I love working with children. They're very easy to work with. Mashallah. They're very easy. They're not naughty. Some are, but I mean, you have to work around that, <laughs> but yeah. How do you work around it? Timeouts. <laughs> <laughs> 
Bashallah, Bashallah. And and you so what I like about you is that not only you have found your passion, not only that you've got your own creative work, now you are also educating people the knowledge that you have attained and you are training them. Do you have a training center? Do you have a, 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 a do you have a school? Do you have a session? How do you do it? Um I had my uh, I have my own uh, studio at home. Uh, okay, mashallah. But right now it's in the process of expanding and so right now we're working in the kitchen. Okay. But um I think art you can do it anywhere. So you say we're working in the kitchen, is it meaning you guys are cooking some food, no. some creative food? <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah. Um, of course the kids get snacks and stuff, but yeah. <laughs> okay, mashallah. Is it only for kids or adults as well? Adults as well. So I can join? Yes, you can. So then I I, I would like to get into drawing. I think I've, uh, I I need to... to, to, to but actually, what I'm trying to teach is not just um, drawing. Um, I believe that to, you need to learn how to look around you and figure out ways of recycling. And since we are a consumer society... And um, learn how to make things from things around you. For example, um, if you have toilet papers, uh, how can you turn that into, for example, a jewelry accessory or pencil case? Wow. And so, yeah. Wow. So you basically look at the thing that is around you and see how you could utilize the different pieces that are out there to make meaningful products. Is that what you do? Yes. No, I really love that. So it's not about really taking a, 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 a you know a piece of paper and uh, drawing. There is the there is that, and there is also. But I feel like kids these days don't use a lot of their motor skills because everything is iPad and technology, and mm. they're not really going out and playing and utilizing that. So yeah, I true. try to reintroduce how can you make things because I feel like they're more creative when rather than just taking picking up a piece of pencil and drawing. Okay, okay. No, I really like that. Now, how can people get hold of you and contact you in order for them or their kids enroll into the programs that you are? Um, you can either email me on uh, sophia.artwork at gmail.com or you can give me a call on okay. my number. Yeah. Okay, so that is the you've shared your email address. Actually, if you share your phone number, you're going to be... Be a, yeah, be a spammed you a lot of people, <laughs> but I'm sure with the email, yes, it's uh, they, much they, better. They write you an email and uh, they would be uh, able to contact you and see how they could uh, enroll. Inshallah, me too, by the way. Yeah. So we need to talk about that as well. You were featured in TEDx, yes, and that was about three years ago. Yes, about three years ago. Tell us about your experience with TEDx. Wow, um, it actually initially started. Um, Someone uh, or a friend of my mother's uh, knew about our story and uh, they put our names down. And so the organizers of TEDx came around and initially they just wanted me to speak. And then when they found out the story of my mom and I, they're like, you guys need to, you know, share your story. Yeah. And my mom didn't want to participate. She's like, I'm not ready to speak. But yeah. it, finally, she, Annie, decided. She yeah. That. Tell us about the story. Uh how my mom's work, uh, she's a health educator okay. and uh, she does a lot of community work. And I was born in the hospital for three years. Okay. And um, so once a week, we would go to the Amani Women Association. It was like, um, uh, like a, a nursery for us. And my mom was one of the volunteers along with other women who would work with the people with disability. And I guess just instantly we fell in love with each other and she adopted me. Mashallah, mashallah, mashallah. And then? And so our journeys work together. I mean, um, she has raised me up uh, to learn how to fight for myself and advocate. And what she's doing now is running an association, trying to do the same thing for others. Mashallah, mashallah. May Allah always reward uh, your mom and yourself. Mm -hmm. There's a big thawab for that. You know that? Yeah. Mashallah. Please convey my utmost regards uh, to, to mom. And, and, and now with the uh, uh, association that your mom is looking to are you involved in any way um i do help as much as i can volunteer with uh, giving kids art okay and mashallah. they create um different pieces of art whether it's to give um do uh, sponsors a present or just for them to express how they feel okay mashallah mashallah and so you build more safiyas in the country yeah mashallah mashallah <laughs> inshallah over the world as well because i said i i love how you are 
the way you think uh, with a, with a short while that we had to speak before the program. There's a lot that I personally have learned, and and uh, inshallah, many many others will learn as well. Now, tell us about the challenges you have faced and how you overcame them. Um, from schooling. Okay, from schooling. Mm. Uh, well, I had so many family members uh, tutoring me because I was really bad in the sciences. Okay. And um, uh, I knew I was very good in the art stream. So I would participate in all of the like dramas, choirs, and and I was excelling in that. And so that was one way of overcoming the failures I was doing in sciences. Mm. Um, in terms of physical challenges... I just had to keep pushing myself. Um, uh, when, whenever I was, whenever I have been told no, I would just go and do it anyways. Um, I like that. I would get into trouble. I would get into detentions, but I would do it anyways just to prove, you know, that I you can, can do it. it. Yeah. And you did you achieve them? Yes. That's what I love. So you keep pushing until you you keep pushing something. You feel you can do it. You just go ahead, try it until you get it done. Yeah. And mashallah, you are able to achieve them. Ladies and gentlemen, number to call in is 2460-2058. I repeat, that's 2460-2058. Safiya is with me here today on Knowledge Talks. So we're going to take a quick break before we return with our session today. Ladies and gentlemen, the number to call in is 2460-2058. And my guest today is, mashallah, Ms. Safiya Al-Bahlani. An Omani artist, creative designer, and an inspirational and motivational speaker here in Oman, who has also done it globally as well. You have done your presentation, uh, you were invited to speak at TEDx, and you were also invited to speak in SAM Global. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the SAM Global. SAM Global is similar to TEDx, but um, more for the Middle East, and it's actually uh, initiated in India. Okay. So um, I went all the way to Chennai to... Wow, speak, yeah. to speak. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. And how was the experience? It was, uh, I liked it because the the range and the broad um, people who were speaking there was just to another level. MashaAllah. So you made good friends and uh, apart from, uh, uh, you created some good leads as well, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Uh, you have collaborated with local and international exhibitions. Yes. Could you tell us about it? Um, well... It, it all started because um, I had my first solo exhibition in Jordan uh, when I was studying. And it was just uh, an encouragement of family friends. Okay. And when I came back to Amman, of course, I didn't finish my college. And when I came back to Amman, um, I decided to start working. And every place that I tried to, um, you know go for an interview I was I kept getting rejected so I decided the best way for me to advocate is to do another exhibition uh -huh. and while I was researching on thinking what kind of exhibition I wanted to do um, I was introduced to an Armani fashion designer mm -hmm. and so within I mean her she had a target of an exhibition to be in three weeks time and um, she wanted to use His Majesty's annual speeches mm -hmm. uh, and make um, dresses. And she was looking for an artist to to work making the dresses as well as having paintings in the show. And so I decided, you know, why not? And so I worked within three weeks and created 40 pieces of work. Wow, mashallah. And it was a great feedback because you know one um, people who didn't know me realized you know what kind of work I can do and I was always admired fashion but I never wanted to be a fashion designer I wanted to design materials for fashion designers mashallah so it was a great way for me to think and see is this the you know path I wanted to take and after that I still wanted to pursue what I wanted to do is advocate. So I did, uh, through, through that, I started doing public speaking. And um, uh, Bank Muscat uh, was generous enough to say, you know, you can have your exhibition here. And I had my second solo exhibition. In Bank Muscat. In Bank Muscat. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. And it was about 70 pieces of work, but that I worked on for two years, though. 70 pieces of work that you have worked for two years. Yeah. MashaAllah. And... It, there was no theme under it. I just wanted to showcase all the different skills I was able to do in art. Yeah. 
And then I, you know, everybody then said, did you know, did you hear about that physical challenge? She knows how to draw and whatever. And that's not the title I wanted. I wanted people to look beyond that. Okay. Um, I guess I'm an artist, but I don't want you to look at my physical disabilities. Mm. So I approached um, Bede Zubair. Okay. Um, I, before actually having my second exhibition, I approached them and they said, if you don't have a theme, then we can't have an exhibition. Mm-hmm. So I started thinking and I and I approached them and I said, okay, I want to have an exhibition. And I had literally two months to put things together. I had 100 pieces of work and I worked uh, in the same category as using using uh, Armani textures and fashion line. And because people wear it, they don't think about how beautiful it is. So I wanted to project it on canvas to look mm-hmm. at it as a piece of art. So I started stitching and learning and trying to research of the different um, designs that we have in Oman. And I went to them and I said, the theme is beneath the surface. And the reason I called it that is I wanted you to see beyond the challenges. And then that created a really good um, base for me because then people started recognizing me, Sophia, the artist. And Mm -hmm. and, um, when I even got uh, a few requests to do commissioned work, they didn't realize I had a challenge until they met me face to face, which which is what I, what I like. I like to see the surprised look. Wow, mashallah, mashallah! I, I really, really love that because it's true. By the way, if you look at the the, the work that you have, there are a piece of art, mashallah, very, very creative. Of course, I know you, but I'm sure with the, uh, even though even I know you, I'm saying, how did she do that? How can I do that? Never be able to do that. Allahu alam. Unless, of course, I get the training from you. <laughs> <laughs> Which I intend to do, inshallah ta'ala, to be able to achieve that. So you had three exhibitions. I understand. Yes. One was in Kuwait. Uh, no, in Jordan. In, in Jordan, sorry. And the other one was in uh, here in Bank Masqat and then Beit Zubair. Yeah, and then um, just early last year, um, I was honored to be part of British Council called... Um, Art Able, and what they did is they bring a, a, a disabled artists, well-established disabled artists around the world, and we create and make a workshop together. Mashallah. And so one of the British artists uh, had uh, wanted to work with the Middle Eastern um, artist, so the fir- we had we worked together in a workshop in Bahrain, okay. which grew, and we went to Liverpool, and then had an exhibition there. And the whole aim was, you know. Um, most of disabled artists' uh, main complaint is we're constantly trying to prove what we can do instead of really creating what we love. And it made me really think, all this artwork, am I, am I just going to do it because I want to prove a point or should I just use this as a way to voice out what I really want to say? Mashallah, mashallah. And so it started making me think of how to use art uh, as a, a message um, in a different way than just saying, here I am, this is what I can do. MashaAllah. Now tell me one thing. I know you're passionate into graphic and art. Okay, now the element of you going and starting up an exhibition, I would like to know how did it come up with an idea until uh, the phase of really actually materializing it to happen, starting from Jordan. How do you do it? Did someone come and tell you, why don't you have an, an exhibition? Yes, it actually started like that I'll because I had... Paintings all over the house in Jordan. In Jordan, and people were like, "This is an exhibition as it is. Why don't you okay. go?" And I was like, "I'm not ready for it." Okay. So, like, no, go ahead and do it. And when I saw the feedback, I was like, "Okay, maybe this is something I want to do in my own country." Okay. So and then you went and you did it there in Jordan. It worked very well, and you said, "I want to do it in Oman as well." Yeah. You came in Oman and you did it twice. Yeah. What is when is your next exhibition? Um, not right now. I'm actually wanting to focus on children. Uh, and have them have an exhibition. Wow, mashallah. You know, what I like about you is it's not really only about myself, me. No, it's about I like to do an activity. There where you come from, passion. Uh, You found your passion. I can do it despite any of the challenges, and you've done it. Not only you've done it, you've done it better than others, mashallah. You've created the brand for yourself, and now you go out and you say, I want others to be able to do it. I love that. That's a, that's a that's a very noble uh, cause, mashallah. And remember, al uh, when you share it, it's a jari, inshallah. <laughs> I, I, I respect that fully. Now you have your own studio. Yes. Also at home. Now you are also an entrepreneur, by the way. Yes. Yeah, because uh, uh, you 
were working, you said, somewhere. Yeah. Um, after having the exhibition, I was training in a production firm for almost um, six months. Okay. And I decided it's not the place for me because okay. I'm, I'm a creative person. I can't be in an office doing the same thing too many times. Mm -hmm. And then um, when I was introduced to the iPad, uh, I started creating a lot of iPad art uh, through a friend. Wow. And uh, this friend of mine took my art and took it to ITA. Okay. And they said, why don't you join us with Muscat Festival? Mm -hmm. And why don't you draw in front of people? Wow. So they had a big screen behind me and I was drawing on the iPad to promote um, technology. I love that. Yeah. Okay. And when was that? That was in 2012. Mashallah. So you used to take an iPad and you draw things on the iPad. Any mm -hmm. specific app that you use? Um, at that time, I was using ArtRage. ArtRage. The name of app is ArtRage. Yeah. Okay. And then... Um, they were uh, documenting uh, and they wanted... Oh, they were doing a documentary for uh, Omani women and how, the use of their technology. And, they, and they, so they asked me to be part of the documentary. And the person, the director who was doing the documentary saw my work and was really happy and asked me to join his company. Yeah. And I worked with them for nine months. But then yeah. I decided with all the work that I want to do with the community and... You know, to push forward, I won't be able to do it if I sit in an office. Okay. So yeah. I decided to take a risk and just freelance so that I could do my public speaking and teach and so forth. Mashallah, mashallah. And that's when you you jumped into the entrepreneurship bandwagon. Yeah. <laughs> Will you go back to working now? No. If someone offers you a job, we not go. No. <laughs> Even if it's more money. No. No. I've already set my mind, Tarek, so it's no. No. Don't ask me another question. Because I said no. I love, I mean, because I have so much passion in art, I feel like I love what I'm doing. If it becomes a job, I'm never going to be so um, loyal to what I'm doing. Yeah, I respect that. How many hours do you work in a day? Wow. <laughs> wow. There's no time, Tara. There's no time. Yeah. MashaAllah, because you love what you're doing. You don't even feel when you wake up and work on it. Sometimes it's so many sleepless nights. Okay. Yeah. But you enjoy those sleepless I, nights. Yeah. I whine about it, but yeah. then I look at my products and be like, yeah, this is what I want. And you know what I noticed? A number of people that I've met that they want to get into the entrepreneurship bandwagon is that once they get entrepreneurship, they don't want to go back and work for someone. They prefer to work for themselves and do impact because they feel they have the control of it and they enjoy it. You know, they don't feel like work, work, work. You know, at the end of the day, whatever you make will come and benefit you. Exactly. Uh, which, which is, I respect that fully. You also do public speaking. Yes. Tell me about the public speaking sessions that you've done. Uh, I've done for various corporate um, companies. Okay. And I also do for schools and nice. uh, a lot of NGOs. Okay. And... Surprisingly, they always want the same story, which is my own personal story. Okay, mashallah. Um, to myself, it's kind of boring to repeat it again. I'm always looking for different ways of changing it, but it seems to inspire so many. And I'm happy because maybe I don't give you the direct tips and tools to do it, but you learn something from you learn it. Something. Mashallah, mashallah, mashallah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick break before we return with our session today with Safiya Al Bahlani. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Knowledge Talk. I'm your host, Tariq Al Barwani, along with our studio engineer, DJ Ayub, with you here on Oman Radio FM 90.4. Great learnings I've learned from you today, uh, Safiya, and mashallah, you have built a great brand uh, around yourself on the activities that you do, uh, the contribution that you've made, your public speaking and your motivational uh, that those who are inspiring and motivational speaking as well. Uh, of course, I have known you for a long time, but I have always keep on hearing and also seeing you on the media, mashallah. How do you, by the way, uh, how do you feel being a celebrity? <laughs> um, being a celebrity. It's, um. a, it's not what I asked for. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's always nice to see... I mean, I, I look at it in a way that this is a way of um, I'm advocating 
And people look and say, Sophia, كيف حالك? ما شاء الله. Um, before all this, it was oh, مسكينه, and they throw money at me, and I'm like, I'm not a beggar. So I like, <laughs> I like it in terms of it's positive. It's people. You don't that... throw money at me. I'll give you money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, ما شاء الله. Now tell me one thing, Sophia. We love to learn the secrets, and what I'm talking about the secrets. Now let us say. Well, look at look at X Y Z. Whoever's listening to the radio right now, and he or she is physically challenged as well, and he or she wants to be Sophia, the way you are right now, mashallah. From how you started and the way you've built brand, could you please share some tips or some advice that you can share for for the listeners today on how to become uh, as what you have built for yourself, Sophia, mashallah. Um. The very first thing, and I would say this after many years of not accepting, you have to believe in yourself, and you have to accept that you are different, but you are unique. If you can't accept that, and you go through conflicts, you won't be able to overcome many challenges. And um, it took me many years to say it's okay to be different, and because I'm different, I'm unique, and therefore I can produce better. Okay. Um, secondly, if you fall, you le- you need to get up and continue. If you don't fall, you never know when it hits you hard, you just collapse. So, whatever challenges you come, you have to just take a deep breath and say, "How am I going to find a solution to overcome this challenge?" If you don't do that, you're never going to, you know, keep going in life. Um. And then you have to welcome critiques. <laughs> Something very difficult, mm-hmm. but you have to welcome critiques. You have to welcome the haters. You have to welcome um, anyone who is against you because it only makes you more powerful and more, you know, be, being able to achieve better and better. Okay. So to sum it up is you say, A, you need to say, you have to accept, I am different, I am unique. That's the first point you shared. The second part you said is, if you fall down, get up and continue. And the third part you said, you have to welcome critique. These are very, very powerful advices that you've shared. What about having someone uh, uh, to speak with, a, a role model, a motivator or so on? Is that something that you also recommend? I do recommend. I mean, I'm very thankful. I have my mother, the, f- the most uh, role model for me. And then I have certain family members as well um, who always always give me the push you know you can do it you're really good mm. always these these great encouragement words always keep you going as well because even i as a physical person i always over criticize myself and i i uh, always uh, say i i mean I, i have to admit i there are times and say i can't do it so sometimes someone outside and says you can do it you know giving you those inspiration or uh, inspirational words keeps you going and the pat on the back yeah you can do it and, yeah. and that, that's what your mum is doing you said and yeah. which you think plays a very important role yeah. and uh, you would recommend every parent uh, or, or, or friends or relatives to do the same thing to uh, any physically challenged uh, person in order for even, them to become even a normal person always a, needs needs that boost uh, i'll tell you what with all the things that you see from me is that i sit with my dad huh? <laughs> i'm go when i go to my dad i just go like a small baby all the time even today when they see me i'm like a small baby to him so what you said is i certify and accredit as well he motivates me all the time you're like a, so so <laughs> so i love that i respect that fully <laughs> mashallah what are your future plan and goals Uh, okay, so one that's currently working on is expanding the studio and turning it into an art school for whoever who wants to learn. Um, secondly, you know, I have come very far and been able, I have a mouth I can speak, and I really want to help other people who have whatever challenges, um, physical or mentally and so forth, to learn whether it's art or something else that could help them build their confidence skills and to learn how to be more independent. I'm lucky enough to be raised up to learn I can, you know, manage on my own, but other people are constantly dependent on family and constantly feeling sorry for themselves. So I really want to work in society to change this. 
Okay, mashallah. No, I really like that. I really, really like that. And in your studio, inshallah, when do you hope it to be uh, up and running? It is up and running, but the thing is now about expanding. Yeah. Um, probably nine months from now. Mashallah. So you already put the plan as well. Yeah. <laughs> and you're going to have it as Safiya Art. Inshallah. And yeah. don't forget to invite me as well. Inshallah. Safiya, thank you very, very much for joining us today on Oman Radio FM 90.4 to share about your success and great journey. I would like to take this opportunity to, to wish you the very best and success in all you do, inshallah. Inshallah, thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of our program for this week. I hope you all had an intriguing time with us. Let us catch up again next week on Tuesday, same time. I'm Tariq Al Barwani along with our studio engineer DJ Ayu, wishing you all a happy and a pleasant week. مع السلامة